picture goes viral. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is operations with polynomials. Everything you see up here, please write it down. So that would be the best way to approach these notes. Uh, the first thing that we will look at is a couple definitions. You need to be able to perform operations on polynomials, and the operations that you will be doing today are addition and subtraction, and then next week we will cover how to do multiplication. We have actually been working with polynomials so far this school year. You just didn't exactly know what they were because I wasn't telling you at the beginning of the first week of school, but a polynomial is an expression that is made up of one or more terms. And if you don't know what a term is, well that definition is next. A term is any number and or variable that is separated by a multiplication sign. We have been dealing with polynomials so far this school year. I haven't been using the word term yet, but you will understand those in a moment. I will just let you catch up with the writing. And as we go through these slides, if I happen to scroll faster than you are writing, please just raise your hand, let me know. I can easily scroll back up. It's not a problem at all. But once I see that the front row has more or less caught up with all the writing, that's usually my, my signal to start scrolling. To better understand what a polynomial is, it's an expression that has one or more terms. Let's look at some examples of what a polynomial is. Can someone please raise their hand and try to pronounce this word correctly? It's pretty self-explanatory. Blake. Mon monomial? Monomial is correct. And what prefix do we notice in that word that kind of indicates what it what's defining? Daniel? Mono. Mono. And the word mono typically means the number? One. One. So how many terms are in each of these polynomials? Because they're called monomials. How many terms are here? One. One term, exactly. So take a moment and just look up here. Um, you can pause your writing or multitask if you can do that, but very important, you just notice a term or a monomial could be a single number. It could also be a variable. This is one term, this is one term. These are both monomials. A monomial could also be a number and a letter held together by a multiplication dot, but the dot doesn't have to be written there which is why it says right here, a multiplication sign is what holds your terms together. Right here, we have a number and two variables. This is still a monomial. They're held together with multiplication dots. And then the last example, which does look the most complicated, that is just there to show you the point that you can represent multiplication with parentheses as well as just writing numbers next to letters. We are still multiplying between both of those. All five of these are monomials. They can be a number, a letter, or both of them put together. The second type of polynomial is called a binomial. binomial. And then it's called a binomial because how many terms do you notice in each of these three examples? Race? Two. Two. The prefix binomial by, like bicycle, two. What do you also notice about how the terms are separated? How are you able to tell that there are two terms in each of these binomials? Jessica? Because they're separated by either an addition sign or a subtraction sign? Excellent. Addition and subtraction signs will always separate the terms. You should be able to notice that there are clearly two terms in each of these examples because each term is separated by a plus or minus sign. 
Notice, though, in the third example, I'm giving you two complicated looking terms, but this is still a binomial because you have a plus sign in between them. But since the variables and numbers are held together with multiplication dots, these are two separate terms. Somebody raise your hand. Use logic. What do you think is the name of the next vocabulary word that's about to appear? Think logically. Liv? Trinomial. Trinomial is correct. And a trinomial is very obviously a three-term polynomial. Notice that we have x squared. That is one term. x is a second term. And then the minus 3 is a third term. Yes, Race. Um, if you were to multiply a negative number, would that count as a polynomial? Yes, if the number they could be positive or negative numbers. It's just a matter of um, if they're next to each other with multiplication or if they're separated by addition or subtraction signs. Okay. Negatives are fine. There is no fancy word for four or more terms in a single polynomial. You call everything after that just a polynomial. Everything after that is just a polynomial. Yes, Liv? I, I'm kind of confused by what's the difference between them. Like, I don't notice a difference. All of these are called polynomials. But if there's only one term, it has a special name called monomial as well. If there's just two terms, the special name is binomial. And if there are three terms, the special name is trinomial. But all of these put together are all called polynomials. Just these are the special case ones. Can't a tri trinomial, trinomial be um, a binomial because it has the sign? You mean like this one right here? Yeah. Well, because it says x squared and x is the first power and then it just has a 3, these are not like terms and they can't be combined at all. So this is as simplified as it can get. So there are three separate terms here because you can't combine x squared, x1, and 3. They're separate terms. Does that answer your question? Ask me again, though, if you didn't get it. Like, be more specific. That's fine. This sign in both binomial and trinomial. OK. Does that like, matter? It, it doesn't matter if it's addition or subtraction. It has to be one or the other. Uh, so it could be two plus signs. It could be two minus signs. It doesn't matter. As long as there is a plus or minus sign separating the terms, that's how you know which one is which. So that is the first third of what we had to talk about. The next part of it is something that is a pretty reasonable definition. The degree of a polynomial. Oh, did I scroll too far? Yeah, I didn't get the last one. All right, there you go. Thank you. The degree of a polynomial is just the highest exponent on any term, or you have to add up the exponents on the same term. Now, I could have written that out as a longer explanation, but I didn't want you to have to write down a lot of stuff. So the examples that we are about to look at will give you a better understanding once we go through them. But I will give you a moment to copy those examples down. Liv, can I scroll up to the blue line now? Yeah.
give you another minute to set everything up, but write out all four of those examples. We're just going to put the answers right below them, and the answers are very quick to get. So set up all four of those. Number one, first, what do we call this special polynomial? You get a hand for that, Mallory. A monomial. Monomial. So let's look at the definition. The degree is the highest exponent on any term. Well, there's only one term here. So what's the degree of x squared? Cal. Uh, two. Two is correct. The only exponent you see is 2. So that means the highest exponent has to be 2. Number 2, though, what type of polynomial is this? Stephanie? Um, a binomial? Incorrect. Remember, binomials and trinomials are separated by addition or subtraction signs. So because, Stephania, there is a dot between those two, try again. Uh, it's a monomial? It's a monomial. It's held together with a multiplication sign. One second. Oh. No problem. Addy, you're going home? It's a good thing the video is being made. Just, uh, see, don't, don't, don't kick that. We gotta not kick that, Addy. Just ruin the whole video. Oh my gosh. Just, just kidding, the video's fine. We'll edit that part out. But walk around like that way when you go. So this is a monomial, and what is its degree? Let's, let's just ask that question first, and we'll talk about it if we have a group up or something. Tyler. Four. It is four. Why is it four? I only see a three there. How is the degree of this four? Dylan. Uh, because if there's no exponent, uh, it's the same thing as Correct. The y has an exponent of 1. That number 1 did not have to be printed there because you're just supposed to know. Any variable that doesn't have an exponent shown, it's implied that it has an exponent of 1. 1 plus 3 is going to equal 4. That's why the degree of this is 4. You should be able to think to yourself now the answer to number 3. I'll give you a moment to think about that, and then I'll take it a hand being raised. Is there a new hand that could be called on? Someone who hasn't said anything yet? Doc. Six. It is six. And why is that? Because two, two x plus four. Very good. Two plus four is six. The degree is six. Yes. So to find the degree, you add both of the exponents together? If it's on a monomial where they're being held together with multiplication, yes, you add them together. But in number four, what type of polynomial is number four? Again, polynomial? it has three terms, so it has a special name, tri trinomial. What's going to be the degree in this case? Benjamin. Six. Incorrect. The degree is not six because these are three separate terms being separated by plus signs. The degree is the highest exponent on any term, but we have three terms right now. So Benjamin, why don't you try again? Three. Three is the correct answer. The degree is three. Three is the highest exponent. 
Yes, there is an exponent of 2 and 1, and if you add those together, you get 6. But what would these plus signs have to be if we were going to add those together? Valerie? Multiplication, multiplication signs. signs. And if we did have multiplication signs here, it wouldn't be a trinomial anymore. What would it be instead? Tyler? Monomial. Be a monomial. But it is a trinomial, so I'm just going to undo that. I need to be this three. Here is a challenge problem that is beyond what you would likely see on the end of course exam. Find the degree of that polynomial. You do not need to write that down unless you want to. You can simply look at that one and get the answer. What is the degree? If you think you know the answer, just jot it down on your paper somewhere and I'll come by and look. What's the degree? Do you want me to come look at it, Doc? Oh, no. Like, was in the middle, was it a equal sign or a minus sign? A minus sign. Right here? That's a minus sign. No, no. That's the letter Z. Oh. If I do it like that, it might look like the number 2 sometimes. So I put a line through the middle so you know it's a Z. Oh. Good job. That's correct. Correct. That's correct. And yes. John. Not sure. You should try. I don't know why you wouldn't try. You didn't have to write it down, but you should get the answer to yourself. I'm not going to put a problem on the board for you to not do. I said you didn't have to write it down. I'll hit one of those. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. Yes, very good. All right, let's talk about it. This is a polynomial. There are four terms. When you have multiple terms, you have to figure out the degree by taking the highest degree of any one of these terms. The first term, 4 and 2, make a degree of 6. 5 and 1, when you add them, make a degree of, again, 6. And then x and y both have a 1. 1 and 1 and 5, that makes 7. So because 8 is greater than all of the other degrees, then the degree of the entire polynomial is 8. Yes, Luke? That's not the way I thought of it. From what I, I'm sorry, I was busy writing stuff down, so when you were doing 4, from what I heard was um, if, because it didn't go together, because it was, there was addition signs or something, and that's, and then you just said that you go with the highest degree, and I saw that the highest degree was 8, and there was all plus, there were different, different signs. Well, do you understand Adam. what it's supposed to be now, or do you need to re-explain that a little bit? I want you to explain it. Sure. When you have separated terms with plus signs or minus signs in between them, you take a look at the highest exponent on each component. 3 is more than 2 and 1. The degree of this one is 3. There are three separate terms here. They're being separated by plus signs, so you just look for the highest exponents. Over here, there are no plus signs separating any of these letters. So when you have only multiplication dots holding it all together, you just add the exponents to figure out the degree. So when multiplication holds it together, you just have to you add the exponents? When it's plus or minus signs, you are looking at them as individual pieces. And you just find the highest one. Highest one. Yep. Okay. Kaylin. I got eight, but I thought it was a trick problem, so like I thought it was incorrect when I got it. No, it's just the highest degree was eight, so yeah, it was eight. Yep, yep. But okay, let's look at the last thing we need to cover today, and that is how to add or subtract polynomials. I will give you a moment to write down the addition problem, and then we'll talk about how to do it. You're basically just combining like terms which is something that we have been doing for the last week or so of school, combining like terms. You 
do. Yeah. But I'm going to give everyone a moment to write everything down before I start talking about it because, you know, some people aren't great multitaskers. Some people are. learn the proper things to do uh, so that you know, you can answer that question without having to ask me. Camden, if you look right here, it says Quiz Friday, and in parentheses, it has been here for the last two days, the three concepts that are going to be on the quiz. So I always write what's going to be on there, and also assume I wouldn't give you a quiz on something that is 24 hours into the future. That's pretty unfair. So quiz topics are always written on the board, so don't worry about it. This is on it. Yeah, shame on it. So we basically combine like terms, but let me just explain a little bit more because this is obviously a very simple example and they will get more complicated. We have a trinomial and a binomial. They're being added together and you can see that they are grouped with parentheses. The parentheses are there in case a number is in front of the parentheses. Like because there's no number written here, what number technically would go there in that place, Cal? Um, no, no, I said a number, not an operation. Oh, one. Number one would go right here, and the number one would also be right here. And then, what do you do when there is a term in front of parentheses? It's a property that we haven't done a whole lot of this year, but we're going to start doing it more, Blake. Um, you would multiply the one by each of the terms. In Correct. The terms. And what what property is that? Is that called? Um, the property of multiplication. Good guess, Chadrick. The distributive property. Distributive property is what I was looking for. Perfectly fine that you didn't remember that though, because you knew what to do, and that's what's very important as well. What is the nice thing about distributing the number one? It's kind of like the convenient thing about the number one times anything, Mallory. Everything stays the same unless it's like um, negative times negative. Of course, yes. But when you multiply by one, everything stays the same. So basically, in this particular problem, the parentheses don't really affect anything else. So you can kind of ignore that they're there. It's just in case the distributive property is going to be involved. And in the example right here, the distributive property will in fact matter. You're basically just combining the like terms. So start identifying them. Is anything a like term with x squared? Mm. You just say it. No. 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 So that means x squared just tags along for the final answer, and we're done with that. We have a negative 1x. What's the like term that's going to be paired with negative 1x? Let's get a new hand involved. I'm seeing a lot of the same hands going up, and we have some voices that haven't yet been heard. <coughs> Alex. Negative 1x. What's the like term that would go with it? What's the other term that has an x involved with it? Six. So 6x is what you would say, 6x. So negative 1x and 6x would be paired together. And then Alex, again, what would you get when negative 1x and 6x combine? 5x. 5x. And then let's get another person involved who I haven't heard from. Well, let's go with Jalen. What are the last two terms that would be combined? 3 and 1. Not 3 and oh, 1. Wait, no, that's well, negative 3. Negative 3 and negative 1. Yeah. And what would you get when you combine those? Um, negative 4. Negative 4. And that's the answer. You combine all the like terms, you do the operation that was being said, we were told to add, and that's it. The subtraction problem, though, has a little more involved. So while you're writing that down, are there any questions about the addition problem? Any questions? Okay. Um, yes, Ray. I have a question for polynomials in general. Sure. What's the rule for dividing? Dividing. 
So there are exponent laws that we haven't learned yet that come into play if you divide. I could show you nice, easy division examples, but those are the ones that aren't really on the EOC. When we get to the exponent chapter, which isn't too long after now, uh, that will be discussed and, and you'll know. Okay. Very good question, yes. We, we are not dividing polynomials yet. Weird things happen with exponents that you don't know enough about yet, so that is why we're not dividing. Very good question. You will notice again that we have parentheses, but why do the parentheses really, really matter in this particular problem? Why do they matter? Jasmine? Because it's a subtraction sign, so it would be a negative one. Excellent. Because we are subtracting now, it is a negative one in front of the parentheses, multiplying. So when we distribute the negative one, what basically happens to all of the terms when you distribute a negative like that? Turn negative. Well, what if they're already negative? They positive. So what basically happens to all of the signs? They reverse. Okay, instead of reverse, let's flip. say uh, flip. flip. You flip the signs. And that would be something to put as an additional note off to the side for subtraction. Flip the signs. So positive 8x cubed becomes negative 8x cubed. Negative 2x squared becomes positive 2x squared. Positive 5 becomes negative 5. Negative 4x becomes positive 4x. And basically, the original problem, the blue one, you don't really need to look at it anymore because you have now flipped all of the signs and you have four new terms that you can now just combine. Docs, yes. Not in the first part where it was like 3x, 3x2 cubed. Um, why didn't you add um, 1 times it before? Why didn't I do the 1 in front of this beforehand? Yeah. Uh, the order doesn't really matter, so I just chose not to talk about that at that particular moment. Uh -huh. But what I was about to say next is that because there is a 1 there, those parentheses don't exactly affect the problem anymore, so you don't really need to have them there. So it's just something that you can kind of gloss over because it was a one in front. Broke. Do you have to flip the signs of addition also? No, because the addition sign meant uh, it was a positive one in front. So multiplying by positive one doesn't change anything, so you don't have to flip any of the signs. Liv. How come you changed the... Um plus sign in that problem to a minus sign. In this problem? Yeah, in that part. Which plus sign are you talking about? In front of the 5. In front of the 5. Well, positive 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So I had to. Hmm. Positive times negative. We are now ready to combine all the like terms and be done with the problem. What I would recommend you do is locate the highest exponent and start combining there. What is the highest expo exponent term that we see in here, Brooke? Three. Three. So what term are your eyes looking at right now? Six, six x three and eight, negative eight x three. Very good. So those will combine, and what will be the result of combining those, Daniel? Negative two x to the third. Negative two x to the third power. What about the x squared terms? Where are those like terms? Tyler? Oh, 3x squared plus 2x squared. Very good. And what do you get when you combine those? 5x squared. 5x squared. Moving down the line, because like I said, go from biggest exponent to smaller exponents, what's going to come next based on what we have left? What are we going to put down next, Camden? Negative 7 plus negative 5. Well, there's a term that we can do before that. You're not wrong that you're combining those, but there's another term that kind of needs to sneak in there a little bit. A second in? Oh, 4x. Very good. The 4x has nothing to combine with, so it just tags along. You just put down plus 4x. But now that the only thing that's left is the negative 7 and the negative 5, 
now we would combine those together because they don't have any variables. So it's just your, your constant term. And what will be the answer for negative 7 minus 5, Brooke? Negative 12. Negative 12 is correct. Uh, yes, Dylan. Um, if you didn't skip the negative 5 and um, did the um, negative 7 and negative 5 before, just adding the 4x. Like if you flip those around? Yeah, would the, would the uh, answer be wrong? It would not be wrong, but there is a section that we will eventually get to where you learn about something called standard form. And standard form with a polynomial is where you put the exponents in a descending order. If you were asked that question, you would be wrong if you flipped them. But I'm not going to take off points if you do that now because you haven't been taught that yet. So. Yes, Dosh? Um, why didn't it say after negative 2x, uh, from, um, no, no, in the main equation, okay. 5x squared? Why does it say that? We have a 3x squared and a 2x squared. And when you add them together, 3 plus 2 is 5. So that's why it says 5x squared. No, but that's a negative. So a right here, this is a plus sign right here. Oh. That's a plus sign. In the original problem, it was negative. But because of the negative 1 in front that we distributed, it became positive 2x squared. Oh. Any other questions? All right, cool. Well, good job. Let's, uh, let's talk about how to do some practice problems. I can turn this off now.